Hello, hello. We are live. And if you hear any boats in the background, that is because I am literally, you know what, I'm not gonna flip you around because you are set where you are. But afterwards, I will share with you right here on screen where I am, which is New York. New York, New York. No, I can't sing. I'm actually in Brooklyn, not, not New York, really. But we are overlooking the Brooklyn Bridge. We have boats on one side, a lot of traffic on the other side. So if you hear any noise in the background, I'm doing my best so you don't, but that is what is going on. All right, more importantly, today we are here to talk all about AI. More specifically, how to accelerate your learning within AI. I mean, AI nowadays is everywhere. It is continuing to be the number one industry that, or the industry that is growing at the number one pace. It is touching every aspect of our lives, integrating into all technology. I mean, it seems like the place to be. But it brings up the question, if AI is becoming this massive industry with so many jobs that need to be filled within it, how do we upskill and learn about AI as efficiently as possible. Because when you start digging around when it comes to AI, you will quickly realize that the topics, what you can learn around it, feels endless. Because, well, it's not endless, but it almost is at some point. There's so much to learn, and it feels like so little time. You wanna jump into a role that is around AI, or maybe you're just learning for your own personal benefit. Whatever the case is, I'm going to share with you today some ways that you can upskill quickly when learning about AI. Now, this is coming from my own personal experience. I am studying AI and machine learning at George Brown College. I just finished my first semester there, and it went really well, but I'd be lying to say, or I'd be lying if I didn't say it was extraordinarily challenging. There were so many mistakes I made when it came to how I was learning about AI. I honestly thought it would be like learning anything new where, you know, as a software developer for that traffic, I don't know if you can hear it. As a software developer for many, many years, I'm always learning new things. So I thought this will be the same. I went into it with that mindset. Like I'll apply my typical learnings to learning about AI, but honestly, there is so many things I would do differently that I uncovered in my first semester. I'm going to be sharing with you what those are so you don't have to make those same mistakes. All right, let's get into it. Oh, before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, AI, future tech, news, all the good stuff, all things tech. All right, now let's get into it. All right, actually, before we get into these techniques, I wanna share with you a few key areas if you are just beginning your AI journey that you should really take into consideration to focus on first. Now, I'll make sure to timestamp this video so if you are not interested in these areas, you can skip to the techniques, but I do think it's super valuable to have a sense of what are some of the very big picture topics within AI that you should really learn about at a fundamental level before diving into deeper topics. Now, these are five key topics. We could go on for so long with different key topics, but these are the five main ones. The first one is machine learning. Now, oftentimes, I don't think so much anymore, but I think before AI became a really hot topic, machine learning was often confused with AI. It was almost these terms were used interchangeably with obviously they are very different. So in machine learning, these are the things I really want you to focus on. One being understanding what supervised learning is, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, and neural networks and deep learning. Now, of course, these are just high level definitions, but make sure to save this video or screenshot this if you are more interested in focusing on machine learning. The next is natural language processing or NLP. This is a term that I feel like has been thrown around quite a bit lately on social media, in the news, and here are some key topics to really understanding what this is. Then we have an area I'm really interested in, which is computer vision. I just think there's so many possibilities with this. I'll put up on screen here some fun kind of videos I've done on it in the past where, you know, with computer vision you can um, what is it you know see someone's posture how good it is or different things like that computer vision can kind of get to be a weird area as well because it kind of feels almost invasive in, if it's not used correctly but it definitely is an area to really look into the fourth one is another area I think I'm super passionate about is which is robotics and autonomous systems this is super interesting seeing how AI combined with robotics and what that really looks like for our future. Here are a few topics under that to look into. And then the fifth one is AI and ethics. And this is so important because oftentimes, well, even in this list, it's the fifth one, but oftentimes it should be put first as it's often pushed to more of an afterthought or more at the end of your learnings. When in reality, if we don't take a lot of these AI and ethical decisions into play, we can't build or we shouldn't be building software or projects without them. So it's very important as well. All right, the first tip I wanna give you or technique around how to really ramp up your learnings with AI quickly. And listen, just hear me out before I 
say this first one, or once I say this first one, is hands-on experience. Now I know you're like, Tiff, this isn't revolutionary. Why are you sharing this with me? Of course I'm gonna be hands-on. But hear me out here. Oftentimes what we end up doing is we start really going down the theoretical angle and understanding everything and almost get scared to get on to the hands-on part. Even if you are learning AI from a non-technical perspective, you should still be hands-on. And I'll get to that in a second, exactly what I mean. But for people who are learning AI, more of the technical side of things, get hands-on as early as possible and even more so to that, do not be afraid to break things. So often, or for me anyways, when I'm learning something new, when it comes to software development anyways, I really got out of that bubble. I was able to feel comfortable with breaking things because I knew how to resolve them quickly. So here's a little tip. Hands-on, how do you get experience with being hands-on? Well, when we did, or when I took my first machine learning course that was hands-on, what we did is we installed Anaconda Navigator. It's incredible. There are so many different applications you can download from Anaconda Navi Navigator. Anaconda Navigator, all right. We got it. One being Jupyter Notebook. So this is where for me, my class was in, uh, or we built all our projects was in Jupyter Notebook. And it was so straightforward to use, so user-friendly. It's one of those things that you often hear people talk about who use it or you see online, but until you get in there and you're like, wow, this is very user-friendly actually. And Anaconda Navigator made it super easy to install or launch this project and so many others. Like it has Jupyter Lab, it has AWS uh, Console, like it has everything, VS Code it even has. So it, uh, installing Anaconda Navigator was a little bit difficult. I'm on a Mac and it took a little bit of time, but once you did get it installed and there's so many different tutorials, it was a game changer. Now, even if you are someone watching this who does not want to become technical per se with AI, but more so wants to understand the terminology and just the business side of AI, I do recommend you still do some hands-on. I mean, first of all, what's the harm? Second of all, like anything, doing some hands-on projects or just even getting in these environments will really help solidify your learnings. It will take it to a new level. And I think nowadays with AI continuing to be ingrained in so many of our different work processes that the line between people who are very technical and non-technical will slowly blur as they can start using some of these tools. Another way, if you are a non-technical person or even if you are technical and you want to be hands-on with AI is yes, of course, one side is building uh, things like machine learning, using uh, Jupyter Notebook, different things like that. But the other side is, using different tools, building with different tools, getting comfortable with how these systems work. First tip, hands-on, it's a must. It is an absolute must. All right, number two. Coming in at number two is a scientific technique or a technique that has been studied by science quite a bit, which is called interleaving interleaving. And this is the practice of mixing different topics or skills during study session. This is something I have been doing for quite a while and I didn't even realize that it was an actual scientific technique. I just thought, okay, this is really helping me. It makes sense. So let me explain to you what exactly it is. Okay. So here's an example. Say you are learning a very specific topic within AI. You've been studying it for quite a few hours now, and you're kind of getting drained. What you can do, of course, after you take a nap, because by the way, that actually helps retain information as well, is you can go and switch. So completely switch into a different topic. Now this topic is something that will link back to the topic you are studying, but it isn't that same topic. And what this is shown to do or science has proven that it does is will help develop connections between ideas and then also as well enhance the problem solving skills. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're learning about something else, but they're like, oh yeah, okay, so this is how it relates to topic A and vice versa. I mean, you want to be careful with this as well. You don't want to do too many new topics at once, but having a few going at once is a great way to kind of see the bigger picture while still zooming in. All right, coming in at number three, something similar to number two, but this technique is honestly probably my superpower, my super secret power, which is this. This is called elaborative rehearsal, and this involves linking new information to existing information. Now for different topics, it can be a bit more challenging to do, but here's how I love to do it when it comes to learning, especially bigger terms or bigger topics within AI. All right, so let's use an example that we can always relate it to. So in this case, let's use supervised learning in the use case of emails. We can use supervised learning to detect spam emails. So here's how we would do it. An AI model is already trained on a labeled data set that contains both spam emails emails and non-spam emails, spam emails. Not this kind of spam, this spam. So in this training data set, what we would do is it would include input features such as the email's content, sender information, subject line, along with the corresponding labels indicating whether each email is spam or not. So during that training, the supervised learning algorithm learns patterns and characteristics that distinguish spam emails from not spam emails. But see what we just did there? Now, even with that example I just gave you, when you think of supervised learning, you're always gonna think of, well, spam. 
Once again, not this kind of spam. But you really will, you'll always think of spam. And that is exactly what this technique is about. Really reinforcing what you are learning by using real world examples. I do this all the time, pretty much with anything new I learn that especially is technical. It is my saving grace. It is the one way I am able to really relate to these things that seem like such big, difficult concepts in a very micro level, I think micro level, yeah, micro level, that I can easily be like supervised learning. Yes, I know a real world example of that when it comes to email spam. And because of that, I can easily describe as to what it is. All right, that is my biggest tip. So I hope you enjoy that one. It's much easier said than done, but honestly, if you are even having trouble with an example term under, you know, something like supervised learning or unsupervised learning or anything else, what you also can do, if you can't think of a real world example, the best is if you can on your own, that's the number one. But if you can't use any AI to help you learn about AI. So this could be going to ChatGPT, Claude, and inputting literally what is a real world example when it comes to supervised learning. I can't believe I gave away that tip. It's such a good tip, but I love you all. And that's how we did it. All right, in this video, we have gone through some of the core concepts that you should put your focus onto, especially when you're first diving into the world of AI. We then went through the three main key takeaways or key techniques when you are learning AI. All of these techniques, some of them will resonate with you very closely, others you might not really resonate with, and that's okay. Even if you take one of these and they really make a difference in your studies and how quickly you are able to ramp up with AI, it will make a world of a difference. It feels like nowadays, especially in the tech industry, everything is moving so fast, it's impossible to keep up because it is. But using some of these techniques will at least help keep you staying in advance as to learning these technologies. You are not behind or feeling as behind. I mean, we're all kind of feeling behind because it's impossible. But these really help me feel more confident in my skills and learnings. And I hope they do you too. All right, it's so gorgeous out. I need to get back outside, go for a walk. It's Sunday here. And I'm committed, I'm committed to talking to you, but now it's time to go enjoy New York. See you all soon. Oh, hit that subscribe button. I love you all.